a little pause from the action on the track and go and find Ella, who's out and about. Well, we're joined now by A1 Golding. We are in the summer house here in the Royal Enclosure and we've just had a winner. So yes. your happy days, two on the bounce. So you're yeah. not just a beautiful milliner, you're also a pro punter. Apparently so. I mean, who would have known? I am literally picking these names just on names. So it's obviously the way forward. <laughs> well, congratulations. And you've Thank been you. part of the Ascot Millinery Collective for a number of years now. Mm. You must be super proud to be partnering with, a, with an event like Royal Ascot. It is the best kind of accolade, I'd, think, I'd say, as a milliner. It's really a seal of approval, and it's such a beautiful, curated collection of milliners and hats. Um, so, yeah, I feel very honoured. And tell us about the outfit today. The hat is stunning, and the dress is absolutely beautiful. Um, so, obviously, I made the hat. This is called Wouldn't It Be Nice. It's part of my Spring Summer 24 collection. Um, so, it's a Beach Boy song. Um, and obviously it's hand cut uh, goose feathers that make the daisies and little hand beaded bees. Um, the dress, well the ensemble actually, so it's a two piece, is Susanna London. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just loving the kind of pink moment. It feels very summery and it's an English summer in an outfit. Absolutely. And have you been mega busy leading up to this event? I know milliners get sleepless nights leading up to Royal Ascot. Yeah, I mean, it has been pretty crazy. Um, it's basically sleepless nights, many, many weeks on the trot. Um, I have a very, very good hair and makeup person who has like slapped on the under eye concealer because it's been like, there's been some dark circles for sure. <laughs> you would never have known. You look absolutely stunning. And congratulations again on being part of the Millinery Collective. Thank you so much. It's such an honor. <laughs> Thank you. Well, a big week for milliners here, a big week for race goers, big week for racing. It is the best of the best, a true celebration, and of course, the best in hospitality. And race goers certainly been enjoying the hospitality on offer. That's over in the uh, royal enclosure. No pressure for that chap pouring that champagne. Too much cheers from race goers around. And that's what this meeting is all about brilliant racing, brilliant style and exquisite hospitality. I'm doing okay. I feel like I should keep my eye on the glasses. Right, plenty to analyze with the Gold Cup having just taken place. So let's head back to the team then with ITV Racing. Two great horses locked in battle down the straight at Asker in the sunshine. I mean, what is not to love? Kiprios getting the better of the tussle. Taller man running a great race in second. That's what it means to Pat. It's a team effort, after all. Well, Connections have done really, really well to get a photo because Kiprius was behaving like he was a, a two-year-old colt rather than an older horse. Aidan O'Brien here just having a final word with Ryan Moore. Aidan, could you just, for this interview, could you just pop, follow over here? Because I wanted to, to, to bring you over here because, just because Fra, Mrs. Crowley is here and I know how much having your wife's mum here Thank you. Before we speak yeah. to you, Aidan, I yes. want to speak to the matriarch. Yeah. Um, a word on Aidan O'Brien. Or his famous man. He's <laughs> How good a trainer. Very good indeed. Yes. I mean, no one knows more about horse racing than you. Oh, well. He's a genius. <laughs> Michael Table just said, I said, describe Aidan O'Brien. He just said genius. Yeah. Yes, well, <laughs> my husband turned himself for... Best good best friends. Yeah, we learned a lot from Mr. From Crowley, yeah, another, from a long, yes. for a long time. Yeah, yeah, from from another, yes. And uh, Amri, so when 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 Amri had the license with with her dad, uh, Mr. Crowley, Mrs. Crowley's um, husband, and uh, when Joseph was born, the license just changed over into my name. That's how it all happened. So, Matt, there you go. So it's not right, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Crowley. Yeah. And the one thing that's always emphasised with with Aiden is this group of people, family, is just so important to the whole team. They are indeed, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah Usher, it's well, I have to say, you, you produced a good one as well. You know? <laughs> Aiden, yeah, uh, it's a slightly different way of starting the interview because usually, of course, you read out the names that you need to. But I'm going to stop you from doing that right now because the king and queen are going to come and present you with a prize fairly quickly. I said to Michael Table, you know, this is a man who's won the derbies with two horses tailed off in the 2000 guineas. Now he's brought Kiprius back almost from certain retirement to win an Ascot Gold Cup. Even you 
today have to say, Aiden, job well done. Yeah, no thanks, Matt. Obviously, I didn't bring him back. I was only watched it happening. Uh, obviously, so many people involved. Derek uh, Donal are in charge of him. Fazzy, who looks after him. Uh, Eamon, uh, uh, Dean, Shane, uh, Pa, uh, Rachel. Um, there's so many people ar- around him that do so many things. Uh, um, Rory, um, uh, I, I could go on forever, John. Um, but you do all Jack, that. Jack, you do understand, yeah, Aiden. They yeah. would always say, "No, yeah, but it's no, Aiden." No, no, they're the people that made it, made it happen, uh, Matt. And we watched it. And obviously, Eva and to have the patience that she had with John and Sue and Michael and Dorian and Gay and, and Derek, like it, it was incredible. Like last year, anybody they wouldn't have asked let him race again last year and he had two lovely runs um, and then obviously progressed lovely through the winter um, Dean rides him out every day um, this is Dean yeah, Gallagher yeah, used to be a good yeah, jump jockey yeah, back exactly, in the day and Patrick rode him all through the winter um, Rachel rides him in his work um, it, and, and, uh, Anya is, um, looks after him we, in, in, we know in, it's in, a big team Aiden, yeah. but talk to us about the horse Kiprios because yeah. he had a nasty injury he did come back he's run a couple of runs that was a proper horse race today. That is what a Gold Cup should be, a real jewel. Yeah, absolutely. John, Jerry, forgotten, Jack. Um, you know, abso- <laughs> ab- absolutely. Um, yeah, listen, and he's, he's, he's a beautiful horse, but when he goes to the front, he went to the front with the second horse last year and he came back at him. So it was, uh, Ryan was, it was masterful what he did, really. Um, he had him there and he had to judge when to go and not to go and uh, he, he didn't he went and he still didn't really go so it's not an easy thing to do um, at obviously as he's older he's a little bit cleverer and wiser um, Ryan said to me going out he said he felt he was the best horse he stayed the best and he had the most speed but it, 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 it was a masterful ride really well the crowd are beginning to clap which means the king and queen are coming for you Aidan final word have you left anyone out you just want to say before you go no there's loads of people I've left out all the, the people in the gallops the office cool more everyone. off you go Aidan there's, thank you very much there's so many people I'm not mentioning the I'm ice sorry. cream man sorry. the milkman no. yeah. thank you Aidan <laughs> yeah uh, fair play to Aidan O'Brien um, and to Ryan Moore here this was a, I was a great ride as Aidan O'Brien has said so look uh, Kiprios broke well on the outside and, and Ryan kept it fairly simple in the middle of the track early now Trollam and went forward but Keith Corrister got very keen early with Benoit de la Sayette he has her at this stage but he doesn't have her for much longer round the bend here Kiprios goes to lean in behind Trollaman Ryan doesn't want him in there so he hauls him back out and as they went down the hill then uh, Keith Corrister got running on Benoit now you can see uh, William Buick has a look across here and I'd say he's thinking oh my god I'm in control of this race and now you've ruined it on me as Keith Corrister comes and takes on uh, Trollaman Ryan doesn't want to get caught in the pocket so as soon as he got out of Swindley Bottom he stepped into the middle of the track and um, to give himself a bit of space but then it's the judgement it's not to commit him you can see the gap Ryan doesn't get down into the saddle he's winding Kiprios up but he doesn't get down in the saddle until Vauban appears now Vauban didn't get the trip I thought he would but he didn't and Ryan now is still winding him up he doesn't really go for Kiprios until he gets down to the furlong marker and then he goes and puts him in front of Trollerman as Ryan said himself he was valued for a bit more than the winning distance but it takes bravery I thought Sean Levy was very brave on Tuesday on Rosalian to stay in but it also takes bravery not to commit the easy thing to do is to go but Ryan Moore made that mistake in October he wasn't going to make it today and that's why he's the best jockey in the world no disputing that whatsoever Ruby is now the winning trainer for ninth time in the Gold Cup he's only actually had 23 runners in this race and he's won nine Gold Cups remarkable the king and queen here to present the Gold Cup how the late queen used to love this race. Did you receive your prize off the, off the late queen when you won? I did, yeah, and it was always so special, you know. It, that's what Royal Ascot was all about, you know. Uh, going up there, meeting her on the biggest stage, picking up that cup, it's... You know, and this horse, this horse will go and do it again, Ed. Like, he's, he's a horse that's, you know, now that he's back on he's the only road, six. Yeah, he'll, go, he'll come back and do it again, and if anybody can get him back, um, it's that man there on the right. Here comes Anna, who we talked about earlier, doing such a great job uh, for the O'Brien team at Whisperview Trading, and Ryan has his hands on the Gold Cup again for a fourth time, and the Moyglare team are up there in force, and all the Magna boys are here. Dad, John, I hope, watching these pitches at home. And Ryan is smiling. You don't see him doing that often, do you? He's been very cheerful this week. Ah, he has, yeah, but you know when you're after riding, you're doing a good job. You know as a jockey you're after doing a good job. Most of these horses are going to win anyway. They're the best horse. You put them in a good place, but you know when you made the difference. And although he was a hot favourite, Ryan Moore made the difference today. So as Ruby said, Vauban clearly didn't stay. What about some of the others? Let's go to Rishi.
Well, Joan Gosling has just watched Kiprios see off Trollerman. Uh, and also, a great run from Sweet William. Let's, let's deal with your view, John, of what we all felt was a thrilling finish. It was. I think, what obviously, with Trushan coming out of the race, he would have probably been the obvious pace. So we were left in the knowledge that if there was no pace, let Trollerman go on, do his own thing. William gave him a lovely ride, found a great rhythm. Just got in, just changing his legs. And, you know, when Kiprios came to him, there was a battle. Then Kiprios gone by, then he fights back. And that's what you like to see. They're a ding-dong right to the line at the end of a gold, gold cup. And then Kiprios, having nailed him in the mud, he beat us on the fast ground today. Uh, Sweet William, is there a race over two and three quarter miles? Well, he, he likes, you know, he thinks about life. He gets there when he wants to. He does things, everything in his own time. But he ran really well to be third. So, look, second and third is great, great run from, from both horses. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations to the winning team there, lifting the trophy. We've still got three more races still to come this afternoon on ITV. We're showing you every race live this week. And it's time to go and catch up with Mark and Charlotte. We are here with two esteemed trophy presenters today, Celia Emery and Sarah Beanie. I mean, how was it? Gorgeous, actually, to be on the stage with such champions. I think it was wonderful. I'm so excited. Yeah, I mean, it's so amazing. And they've worked so hard to get to this point. I mean, I think anyone who's at the top of their game is it's a privilege to meet. But it's it? especially good to be able to meet the stable lad or the, uh, the yes. lass who's looked after the horses. Done all the hard work as well. Can yes. I just say, you are both looking magnificent. You look fantastic. How was it putting the outfits together? Well, I loathe shopping. You loathe shopping. I loathe shopping we as well. We both loathe shopping. So yeah. to go somewhere. Oh, same here. No, no really. Seriously, <laughs> I was not. wanting to know about your, your... Did you fix this together, this pink oh, no, this. symphony going oh, this, this is, So I allow Charlotte then, to pick and then I, well, I accessorise. I copy. You copy. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I'm no, very, no, no, very no, no. proud <laughs> to say this is a Faberbrook coat, which I'm absolutely adoring. And it's wonderful to be able to go to one shop and just know you're going to get something gorgeous. And my hat is from the magnificent Philip Treacy. Amazing. It's beautiful. Can I just say, you are looking exceptional as well. Obviously, you've got a book out now, I The have. Simple Life. You know, this is hardly The Simple Life. <laughs> it's not The Simple Life, Sarah. It's That's what, what I'm aspiring to. It's The Simple Life. I'm going to get there one day. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> um, not so much. It's a work in progress, The Simple Life, but I get that. I would say, you're looking really well. How are you doing with everything, yeah? Really well. I'm so lucky. I had a lucky diagnosis lucky mm. treatment True. yeah I'm lucky I yeah. know you've been sending your thoughts as well to uh, the, the king and the princess of Wales they'd be very brave aren't they being out there I mean amazing I mean they're amazing yeah. and you know but what a joyous place to be it I mean, it's, yeah. it's just fabulous and the yeah. sun is shining and we're lucky to be alive aren't we we most certainly are we that's are. exactly how we feel every one, day here we? yes yes great news to you and I've got to say Celia congratulations on your CBE from earlier this year how does that feel services to drama well I'm now a commander you see so I can tell everybody what to do which is really brilliant does anyone listen no <laughs> and I have to ask you I'm a huge fan of the Thursday Murder Club which has got a stellar cast you're going to be Joyce what can you tell us when does filming start can't tell you anything oh no <laughs> no it's very soon very soon I'm super excited I bet you are it's going to be quite something isn't it hope so <laughs> no one more excited than Charlotte I'm Hawkins I'm very excited and that's all we're going to get out of Celia for now isn't it we'll see you later see you later meanwhile more fallout from the Gehol Cup the kings of Ascot after King Kiprios in the Gold Cup Too long.